coming tonight. Even if you're not a patient here yet, you're still going to get some really valuable information. It's going to be really well worth your time. I want to introduce myself first. I'm Dr. Polly Edgar. I'm a chiropractor here, and this is Dr. Shalom Samuel. She too is a chiropractor here. She's not treating patients yet, but very soon. And I told the patients they had to come because we're going to tell them what true health is, how to get it, how to keep it, basically how not to undo what we're trying to fix. But I also hope to show you that trauma or injury plus spinal neglect equals poor health. Okay? And there's five words that we hate to hear come into our office, and that's I thought it would go away. Right? It's like, oh, I got this pain in my back, I thought it would go away. But common sense and reality says it's not going to go away until what's causing it goes away. So basically, like the pain might come or go, but unless something actually treats what's causing it, it's good, this problem's still going to be there. It's just a matter of time before it comes back. So, when we're first born, we can actually get these subluxations. That's what we treat as chiropractors. It's called a subluxation, or basically these misalignments in the spine. And people say, well, how did I get these misalignments? How did my spine get out of place? How did I get these pinched nerves? And we could stand up here for hours and hours just listing thousands and thousands of ways. And they'd all be right answers, but obviously we don't have time for that. So I want to go over the three main categories. And the first we're going to focus on tonight is physical. So physical trauma, okay, car accidents, lifting things wrong, falls, okay, there's thousands of ways that we can physically hurt ourselves. But the two lesser known causes people don't think about all the time is mental or emotional stress, okay. Has anyone ever told you you're going to worry yourself sick, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it, what happens up here mentally has a physical effect on our body too, right? And then the third, probably the most common is chemical. And this oh, preservatives in our food. Um, like the MSG that's in the, the Chinese food, the high fructose corn syrup that's in everything, um, nicotine, like cigarettes, alcohol, even prescription drugs or over-the-counter drugs, okay, those are all chemicals that affect our nervous system too. Okay, but like I said, tonight we're going to focus on the physical. So when we're first born, when we're first brought into this earth, we can actually get subluxations. They did a study on 100 OBGYNs, and those are the doctors that deliver the babies. So all day long, they're just, you know, delivering these babies. They set up this whole computer apparatus, and then they had, out of these 100 doctors, the average doctor weighed about 170 pounds. They said, now doctor, just pull on this machine, you know, just like you do every day, just like it was a baby, okay? Well, the average baby weighs about 6 to 10 pounds, okay? So when they did, the, well, if I lift this baby up like this, yeah, you all give me dirty looks, right? Well, why? Because most of that 6 to 10 pounds is going to be pulling on her neck, right? So you have to carry the baby like this, and at first you even have to support their head, right? But when they did this study, the average force that was recorded by these 100 doctors was 70 pounds. Seven zero pounds, yeah, on that little baby's spine. So pulling the head out, we've had moms say, oh yeah, my, baby, my baby's collarbone was broken. Sometimes even both collarbones in the same delivery. Or the babies can come out with their heads like turned around, they're like looking backwards like the exorcist. Mm -hmm. Obviously that's going to cause some misalignments, right? That's not what our neck is made for, okay? But you say, well, what about C-sections? More and more these days, uh, babies are being delivered C-section. Well, that, in that case, the stomach is cut open, the mommy's cut open, and then they grab the baby by the feet first. So then it's like a whiplash to the neck, okay? So again, they get these misalignments in the spine, and obviously, I mean, they can't tell us, oh, my neck hurts, but they tell us in different ways. They get colicky, okay? The tummy, they can't digest their food, and that's directly linked to the subluxations in their spine. Or the earaches, they get ear infections. Maybe end up even getting the tubes in the ears. And that's true from misalignments, pinching on the nerves in the neck. Uh, even more so these days we're seeing the ADD, like the attention deficit hyperactivity disorders, okay? And those two are linked to the pinched nerves in the neck that, that go to the brain, okay? Now when we get a little bit older, let's say we're in, we're in school now. Well, you know how little boys, they don't really know how to flirt with girls properly. So have you ever gone to sat in your chair and they yank it out from underneath you, right? And crash down onto the tailbone. And the spine's not made for that kind of force. So that force goes up through the tailbone, all the way up to your neck, and you're just so embarrassed. You just brush yourself off, and you probably don't even tell anybody. You don't even tell mom or dad. But the spine doesn't forget. Those misalignments don't forget. So even if the soreness goes away, like I said, years can go by, and then those injuries can come back to surface, maybe 20, 30, sometimes even 50 years later. Okay? 
And speaking of that, little boys playing football, you know, the adrenaline's pumping, they're all excited, but they're out there just ramming heads, you know, just like two sheep going at it, okay? And again, the neck is not made for that kind of force, all those thousands of pounds of pressure on those little necks. And um, again, maybe we'll sit out that game, the soreness eventually will go away, you know, the pain will go away, but if that subluxation is not treated, if that misalignment stays out of place, it's just a matter of time before it comes back. Okay, so just because it doesn't hurt doesn't mean the problem's all of a sudden fixed. It just means, you know, it's underlying. It's usually in there getting worse until, you know, you end up in our office. Okay. Or with car accidents, uh, we ask people all the time, you know, have you ever been in any car accidents? They're like, oh, yeah, but it's just a minor one. I've walked away from it. Well, sometimes those are even more damaging because the way the cars are built nowadays, they actually have what they call an impact zone. It's like a crumple zone in the hood. It's meant to absorb all the shock, so it like crumples and it de destroys itself to save us, the drivers on the inside, okay? But at these low speeds, you know, like five, 10 mile an hour, there's like no damage to the car, right? Maybe it scrapes the paint a little bit, but the car is essentially fine. So then guess what, who gets all the damage? The driver, the person on the inside, okay? And they get the whiplash. So basically you're sitting there minding your own business, all of a sudden your head whips forward and then whips backwards. Okay, so it goes too far forward and too far backwards. Like they actually have um, at the hospital what they call lipstick sign. So hopefully a female driver, right? She goes into the emergency room after the paramedics brought her in and they notice right down here in her blouse a lipstick stain. They say, well, how did that get there? Well, your head went so far forward. I mean, try to do it right now. You can't do that. Normally, your head won't go that far, but it will go so far that your lips will actually touch and then it goes that far the opposite way too. Okay, so obviously, yeah, that's going to cause some problems with the neck. And in the emergency room, you know, they'll just give you pain pills, muscle relaxers, maybe some um, anti-inflammatories to help with treat the symptoms. But again, it's not doing anything to actually address the cause, what's actually causing all those symptoms. Okay. So, um, so like I said, people come into our office, you know, and maybe they have their neck pain. At this point, it's already going numb down their arm. You know, we ask about any old injuries, any old car accidents. And they say, oh yeah, you know, two years ago, I was in this minor fender bender, but I wasn't hurt. But it's like a light bulb. For us, as the chiropractors, it's like a light bulb going on. Oh yes, you were injured in that accident. You just didn't feel it at that moment. And then now it's just gotten worse and worse until we're in this situation where now it's coming out of the neck and so bad it's already going into the arm. Okay. So let's go into the, um, let's go into this final model here. Let's do a little anatomy class. This is just a plastic model of the spine, okay? We're looking from the back. So when you look from the front or the back, it should be straight. All the bones parallel to the ground, okay? So we're looking from the back. So these are the, this would be like the right hip, or technically called the ilia. So we put your hands on your hips like when you're bad. That would be the right ilia, the left ilia, and they both come back and they meet the tailbone, which is technically called the sacrum, okay? So it's just named after those two bones, the sacrum iliac joint. And this down here is the ischium. This is what we're sitting on. So this is what's touching the chair. So if you have like a wallet in your pocket or a phone, maybe your cell phone, or even like we've seen men with like wadded up handkerchiefs, just that little bit can cause that side to come up higher and can cause that subluxation, cause those to be misaligned, okay? Or sitting with the legs crossed. That's why we're always yelling at you girls, just to cross at the ankles. <laughs> <'cause what? laughs> Somebody's doing it right now, aren't they? So, so with that one, same thing, with that one leg cross, it makes that hip come up higher. And that too can cause the misalignments, okay? Now just above the sacrum is the uh, lumbar spine, okay? So these are the bones in the lower back. And there's five of them. And they're just numbered from the top, one, two, three, four, five, down at the bottom, okay? And from the side, we should have curves. Okay, so the lumbar spine should curve in or forward. Okay, that would be the front. So that's why you have these little pillows, these little lumbar cushions are in your cars. They have that lumbar support. Usually you can adjust and fill that seat up because when we sit, we tend to slouch. And then that curve is straightened and then it strains all those muscles back there and then puts pressure on those nerves. Okay, so if we have that little pillow in there, it keeps that C shape and then keeps the pressure off those nerves. Okay. Now above the lumbar spine is called thoracic. Thoracic is all the bones in the middle back. So there's 12 of those, like we have 12 pairs of ribs, okay? Because we have 
uh, ribs that attach on either side. So right where this little bone sticks out, there's a rib that comes around on the right and a rib that comes around on the left. So we just, again, number these from the top down one through, one through 12. Okay? And so when these become subluxated or when they're misaligned, the ribs can become misaligned too. And then the pain can come around into the chest. Now, the cervical is the bones for in the name the name of the bones in the neck. Okay, cervical is also C-shaped. Okay, so it curves out between the shoulders, thoracic, and the back end again at the neck, like a C. Okay, and there's seven of those. Again, just one at the top, down to seven at the bottom. Okay, does anybody want to guess how many bones a giraffe has in its neck? <laughs> so, that's right. You, how did you know that? But your dogs, your cats, whales, basically all mammals are built the same, same design, just different shapes and sizes. Okay? But yes, we have seven in our neck, and, um, and this C-shaped curve is very important for our range of motion. Okay? So like a lot of our patients will have too straight, or sometimes even curve like reverse. It's curved in the opposite direction, and that can restrict our range of motion. Like we should normally be able to turn like 90 degrees each way for like a total of about 180. And so uh, without that curve, maybe they can only turn, you know, 70 degrees each way. It re restricts that range of motion. You know, owls, they're like famous. They can turn their head almost 360 degrees. That's because they actually have an S shape. They have like one C this way and one C this way. So their neck can curve that, you know, double. And so they can turn twice as far. So they can turn almost 180, you know, 180 each direction, right? Now, one more trivia question you guys can take home to your friends. What's the most important organ in the body? It's the most protective. It's the only one that's totally encased in bone. Yeah. The heart? Close. Yeah, that's a very good answer. Not the one we're looking for, but yeah, you can't live without it. But you've heard of heart transplants. What about a brain? Have you ever heard of a brain transplant? No. Some of the people maybe need one. But yeah, your brain is totally encased in bone. Okay? So your heart, your lungs are important. You can't live without them. But you can go to the butcher shop. Okay, you get a heart, it's just going to lay there. What is it going to do? Okay, unless all these essential organs are connected to the brain, they're not going to function. They're not going to do their job. The heart's not going to beat without the brain telling it what to do. The stomach's not going to digest unless the brain is telling it to do that. Okay, so the brain is the most protected, therefore it's the most important. And then the second most important is the spinal cord. Okay, so the brain branches into the spinal cord. Can you guys see that? That's represented by this thick the bigger yellow part, okay? And that's inside of these vertebrae. So the brain branches into the spinal cord, and then it branches even further into these spinal nerves. And these nerves come out in between each one of these vertebrae. And these nerves go down our arms, they go down our legs, they literally go to every single cell in our body. We have like 300 trillion cells, and there's a nerve that goes to every single one of them. If you don't believe me, go home and take your safety pin and just start poking around, right? You'll feel it every place that there's a nerve, right? Now, it's also said that where these nerves come out, like right there at that nerve root, it's called, only 25% of the nerve fiber is actually carrying pain signals. The other 75% goes to all the muscles, all the organs, controls their functions. So, like in theory, you could have 75% of your nerve pinched and you wouldn't have any pain to speak of, okay? Now, before we, move, before we move on, I want to go over the discs because we said the brain was totally encased in bone and the spinal cord is almost totally encased in bone except for these cartilage discs. And they too are very important for our range of motion. Okay, if we were just solid bone, like all up and down our spine, there'd be no way to bend down or to twist and turn. We'd just be as stiff as a board. Okay? But these discs are very important and if they start to go bad, then that too affects our range of motion. It makes us stiff. So I have a special model here. This is, this is two healthy discs and two healthy vertebrae. Okay? So if you look like from the top, like if we cut you in half and look down through the top, you can see the disc is like very ligamentous. It's like really strong on the outside. It has to hold on to the bone above it and the bone below it. Okay? But on the inside, it's called the nucleus. And that's like the spongy shock absorber on the inside. So every little step you take, every little bump in the car, these discs are absorbing the shock to keep, to keep the pressure off the nerves here. Okay? So this is normal. But when we get a subluxation, when that bone comes out of place, look what happens to the disc. Can you see that? See how the disc is coming out of place too? It's like a balloon. If you squeeze on one side of the balloon, it's going to bulge out on the other side. Okay, so this represents a disc bulge. You've probably heard of that before. 
Well, that too, can you see where it's bulging out? And it's pinching the nerve. That's the nerve right there. Okay? So the subluxation and the disc out of place pinch those nerves. Okay? And that's what we're all coming here for. So to get that subluxation removed, and then the disc goes back in place, and then the pressure comes off the nerve, and the body can heal itself. Mm -hmm. But all too many times, people don't go to the chiropractor, they have these discs out of place, and what do they do? They probably just give them pain pills, or they go in there and do injections to try to numb the nerve itself, okay? Well, meanwhile, what's causing it, the subluxation, stays out of place, okay? The bone stays out of place, or, or even better, they'll go in there and clip the disc off. They discectomy, and they just take that little place off. But meanwhile, the, the bone stays out of place, okay? Then it starts to degenerate. Degenerative disc disease starts with the subluxation. So then, and actually starts getting thinner. Okay, we lose, start losing that cushion, and then we start getting bone spurs or calcium deposits. Okay, so this one is representing a disc herniation, where you can see it's not even contained anymore. See how it's like leaking out like a hernia? Like, uh, especially men get hernias, the intestines push through the muscles. <laughs> now the disc is, the inside of the disc is pushing through the outer layer. And you can see for the first time, compared to this normal healthy one on the right, do you see the difference with the nerve? See how it's like a little bit smaller? Basically, it's starting to die off. It's atrophy, okay? And the, with these spurs here, these calcium deposits come from inside the bone, okay? So the bone actually gives up its calcium, so they get more brittle, more like osteoporotic, to put the spurs around the edges. So they chafe and irritate, and they uh, pinch those nerves even further. Okay, so this is phase two. And in phase three, it just keeps getting worse unless something is done to stop it. So now phase three, look, the disc is almost totally dried up. There's hardly any cushion left, and see now the spurs are almost touching. They're growing up from the bottom and down from the top, and now that poor nerve is even more frail, even basically more dead in there, okay? And then phase four, that's bone and bone. That's where they actually fuse together. So just like people get bone and bone in their knees, they, got, they can go get a knee replacement, right? But what happens to the joints in our spine, you can't get a lower back replacement, okay? You can't have a new neck, right? So once it's fused, then even chiropractors like myself can't actually correct the problem. It's too late. It's stuck. I mean, there's no putting the bone back in place at that point. Okay. So as long as we catch it before phase four, any of, any of these other phases, we can still treat the problem, still get the problem corrected. Okay. Now, let me just demonstrate. I mean, can I use you, Mom? Okay, you can see. You can sit. You can sit so everybody can see. But I'm going to pinch on her nerve here. Okay. And this is where people get like the carpal tunnel surgery. Right, so you'll see them with like that scar there. Well, the nerve starts here. It comes out and goes down through the shoulder, through the elbow, ends in the finger. So if I pinch on that nerve, does it hurt? Okay. As we hold it here, how do those fingers start to feel? Yeah. Like tingling? Okay. Starting to weak? Yes. Can you move them? It's hard. Harder to move them? It feel weaker? Uh -huh. So within a minute, I don't even know if I've been holding it 60 seconds. Basically, where that nerve is going to is starting to die off. But it doesn't hurt. I mean, it still doesn't hurt. I'm pushing hard. I'm strong hands. But it's where that pinch nerve is, it doesn't hurt. But almost instantly, where that nerve goes to, it starts tingling, starts getting numb. If the muscles are getting weaker. It's dying off. So it wouldn't matter if I'm pinching the nerve here, if I pinch it here, or if I pinch it here. Wherever that nerve goes to, it's going to start dying off. Okay. Well, what if that nerve is going to your heart? Okay. In that same area I was touching, that nerve goes out to your heart and to your lungs. Well, guess what? Your heart's not going to feel cold, numb, tingly. Your heart's going to start beating too fast. Or the blood pressure is going to get too high. Okay. Or what if it's in your lower back? Those ones that go down your legs also go to your bowels and your bladder. Again, your bladder's not going to feel numb or tingly. It's going to maybe pee too fast or you know too uh, frequently. Okay, or maybe we can't hold it, a little bit of incontinence, we can't wait to get to the bathroom, right? So it's like a totally different way of thinking, right? It's like a long time ago they thought the earth was flat. And they said, don't sail, you're going to fall off the edge of the earth and die. But now we know it's a round earth. Okay, for millions of years they taught that it was a flat earth and that was bad information. And now I need you to have that same kind of revelation. Just forget everything you've been taught and think about this round earth now. Okay, so health was your, is your birthright. You were born to be healthy. Okay? Good heads don't hurt. They used to play those commercials all the time. For the normal everyday headache. It's like, no, headaches are not normal. Okay? You're not lacking ibuprofen in your diet. You're not <laughs> Tylenol deficient. Okay? Or just think of the dentist. Let's say, um, 
say you have this toothache. You're like, oh, i gotta, got to get in there to see the dentist. He's poking around you. Maybe he has to take some x-rays. And he sees, oh, yes, it's a cavity. Well, does he say what caused it? Do you think it was that piece of candy you ate last weekend? No. It's probably years ago, right? Probably a lot of damage over a long period of time that led to the cavity. And uh, by the time it starts hurting, it's already gotten to the nerve. And then we know that it's been there for a long time. Okay, and that's how it is with our spine too. By the time it actually starts causing pain, it's already been there for a long time, just like with our teeth. Okay, so we can you know take so much, take so much, take so much, and then all of a sudden it's just like I can't take anymore. You're gonna have to do something about this. Okay, but even if your teeth do go bad, at least you can get dentures, right? But your spine, you can't get it. You can't get anymore. We have to take care of the one we have. Even if, it, even if it gets full of the arthritis, you can't just pull it out. Got to keep the one we got. So at this point in time, I want to go over four big frustrations that we deal with in our office. And one that I said already is thought it would go away. Okay. Putting off or failing to get the problem checked just means the longer you let something go, the harder and therefore the more expensive it's going to be to fix it. Okay. So let's think about, let's use this silly little analogy with a leaky roof. Okay. So let's say we have this leak up in the ceiling, but it's like out of sight, out of mind, right? It's like in the back bedroom and it's just a little leak. And, yeah, you know what, maybe it'll go away. Maybe it'll just go away on its own. Well, I'm just going to leave it there. Well, a couple months go by, six months later, well, you know what, it looks a little bit bigger than it did, but you know what, I, I think it still might go away. Maybe it'll still go away, it'll fix itself. Well now, you know, like a year goes by, and now like the drywall's falling off, okay? It's like pieces are falling onto the floor, so now obviously we have to do something about it. We have to call the roofer, he gets up there, he says, oh yeah, this shingle was bad. We could have just replaced this one little part here, but now the whole roof is going to have to be replaced, right? We have to do the roofing, the insulation, obviously the drywall is going to be have to be replaced. So because we ignored it, because we let it go, it got worse, and therefore it's going to take him longer to fix, and obviously it's going to cost a lot more money, okay? And that's exactly with these subluxations. You can see the longer that subluxation was there, the more and more damage that was caused. Okay, so over the years, more and more of those tissues are affected, and therefore it's going to take longer and therefore be more expensive to fix. Okay? So now number two frustrating is covering up the problem. I know we're going to do it now in society. We have every pill, we have all these potions, we have these bracelets, all these creams. We have everything to cover up what's actually causing the problem. Okay? So just think, let's think of it this way. Let's think of your check engine light. Let's say you're driving to class tonight and your check engine light goes off. It's like, oh, that's okay. I got this electrical tape. We'll just like tape right over that. It's black tape. You won't even see the warning. It should be all right, don't you think? You know, you might make it home, but then the next day, very soon the car is going to break down, right? It was giving that warning for a reason. So <clears throat> that's our body. If our body is in pain, that's our that's our body's check engine light. Okay, so it doesn't want to be just be covered up with muscle relaxers or covered up with pain pills. It wants us to do something to actually fix what's causing the pain. But even if we did, let's say we drove our car with the, you know, covered up the warning light, well then eventually we're stuck on the side of the road and the mechanic says, oh yeah, this little seal could have just been re replaced, but now the whole engine's blown. This head gasket, you know, it's blown and we're going to have to get a whole new engine, okay? Well, that's exactly what happens to our body. We take pills, we take pills, they seem to work, they seem to take the pain away, they make those muscles looser, chemicals do their job, but... Like I said, it's not fixing what's actually causing that, what's causing the muscle to be tight, or what's causing it to be inflamed in the, in the first place. Okay, So we keep taking the pills, they're helping, and then all of a sudden one day they just don't help. And then our health is stuck on the side of the road. Okay, And then hopefully you make it to the chiropractor's office, otherwise go to you know, surgery, back surgery. Could be another alternative. Now just FYI, one of the first pain relievers in this country was aspirin. So when it first came out, it's like a miracle drug. I mean, it's just like, never heard anything about it. Terrible, until Tylenol came out. Tylenol was the next one on the market. And guess what? They said all these terrible things about aspirin. Because they wanted you to buy Tylenol and go buy the aspirin. But how could this be? Something that was so great now has all these side effects. Like it's going to make my stomach bleed and I have bleeding ulcers. And we can't give it to the babies because it causes a rise neck. They get all stuck over to the side. Well, then uh, the next one, the third one on the market was Aleve. And the lady said terrible things about Tylenol for the same reason. They don't want you to buy the Tylenol, they want you to buy their product. Well, Tylenol was a lead, well, second, second leading cause of liver failure, only second to, the, uh, to antibiotics, not even alcohol, okay? 
So it goes antibiotics, then Tylenol, and then a leave is um, a leave. one a leave a day makes you six times more likely to have kidney failure. So then you're going to end up on a dialysis. You have ibuprofen, a leave, all those are kind of in the same group. Okay. So obviously, even though they're not over the counter, they're still very dangerous, and they can still have uh, you know serious effects on our health. Okay. Now, third frustrating is people missing their appointments. We time these for a reason. Okay. We don't just have a dartboard back there and say, oh, okay, uh, you know, Mrs. Smith's going to come this many times this week, and Mr. Jones, he's going to come this many times. No, we set this up for a reason. Okay? We want you to get the best results, so we follow the recipe, just like you would have if you were baking a cake. Does anybody bake in here, bake cookies? Yeah, I think. Okay, good, girls. All right. So you guys maybe not, you maybe don't need a recipe, but if you're me, I have to have, you know, certain amount of flour, certain amount of sugar, I have to measure it all out, all the right ingredients and all the right out and all the right amounts to get the end result I want. Okay? So let's say I want to have this beautiful birthday cake, but I don't really need it till Friday. So I'm mixing it up. Everything seems to be going good. It's looking like a good cake. But my girlfriend calls, she says, Oh you want to go to the mall? I'm gonna go shopping. Yeah? Yeah that sounds fun. I'll just put this cake to the side. Let's turn the oven back off. We'll go shopping. We come back the next day. I think I'll work on this cake again. Do you think it's going to be much like a cake now that we left it set there? No, it's not going to be very good. We might put it in the oven and bake it, but it's not going to come out very well. Okay. So that's just like our appointments. Each one builds on the next. Okay. So we don't want to miss any appointments, and um, we want to keep on the right, you know, frequency of appointments too. Just like if we're going to the gym, you know, just like with you know, exercise or with even like a block ball. Um, always makes sense to me like each block you know on the foundation all has to be set in the right spot the next row all has to be lined up if you're missing one block here it's not going to be a very good block wall right have all these holes in it the window come up and the wall just fall okay so that's how our appointments are too each one builds on the next we both want the best you know result at the end so we have to keep with the recommended um, prescribed treatment plan now number four frustrating is we're too anxious to get well. Okay. I'm not very, patience is a virtue, right? God, give me patience and give it to me now. But, <laughs> but uh, we were talking about Mother Nature's rules, okay? And I didn't make these up, you know, no chiropractor made these up. These are just, Mother Nature says it takes a minimum of 90 days for all these muscles, these nerves, for these discs, the cartilage to heal properly, okay? Has anybody ever heard that it's actually better to break a bone? Like maybe you sprained your ankle real bad? He says, oh, it would have been better if you just broke it, right? Because broken bones actually heal back quicker than all these soft tissues. Okay? And that's what we're dealing with. When we have these civilizations, it's not that the bones are broken. It's the, the, the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, the disc itself, all these soft tissues that hold the bone in place or out of place. And that's what we're trying to retrain. Okay? So it takes them a minimum of 90 days. And this isn't just with chiropractic, but like we mentioned with the dentist, okay? They'll give you like a, a root canal, and you have to wait like at least 90 days, you know, to finish and get, you know, the permanent tooth put back on or whatever. Uh, P90X, have you heard of that one? That's like 90 days, in like intense workout, crazy insane workout for 90 days, okay? And uh, we're talking about minimum because, oh, age, just age in general, we don't heal as fast. Okay, like Natalie is going to heal a lot quicker than Clarissa would, okay? Just to even get like a cut or a bruise on my skin, I don't heal as quick as I did 20 years ago, okay? Or diabetics, we know diabetics don't heal as quickly. Uh, a lot of things slow that 90 days down to make it take even longer, right? Now, I'm going to go over four principles here, and if you can memorize these, like understand them, it's going to improve your life forever. And one that I said already is health is your birthright. So as we're sitting here tonight, your liver is performing 41 different functions. Your lungs are taking in enough oxygen so that nobody's going to pass out, right? No one's falling asleep. Your heart's regulating your blood pressure. Your, um, and you're not even thinking about it, right? You don't have to sit there and say, digest, digest, <laughs> be, be. You don't have to consciously. Not, your brain doesn't have to you know, be aware that it's doing this all the time. Otherwise, you wouldn't even be able to drive a car much less work, you couldn't get anything done, you just have to think about making all your organs do what they're supposed to do. But this, let me explain, it's part of your autonomic nervous system. So it's like automatic, it's like the subconscious part of your brain that keeps all these organs working all the time. So even when you go to sleep at night, you don't have to worry, you're not going to forget to breathe, you're not going to 
forget to digest or your kidneys aren't going to forget to filter the blood. Okay, so it's happening all automatically all the time. So let me tell you how this all starts. When we're first conceived, we're one little cell, right? Like the mommy cell and the daddy cell came together. And we started out as one little cell. Well, that one cell like divided and made like an exact replica of itself so that there was two. And then they just divide again. They just keep multiplying so there's four, and then there's eight, there's 16. Eventually there's just hundreds of cells, but they're all, exact, they're all exactly like the first one was. Okay, so who's gonna be an eyeball? Who's gonna be a big toe? Who's gonna be the liver? Okay, I don't know if they get to choose, but inside this mass of cells, we'll see this dark little streak. It's called the primitive streak. And it, it, it turns into the notochord. Kind of sounds like spinal cord, right? We were talking about the spinal cord earlier. It's our primitive nervous system. Okay? So off of this notochord, this little bud will start to form. And that's going to be the heart. And then these little buds will form. That's going to be the lungs. And then the, this little bud will be the kidneys. Okay? So from the very, very beginning of life, it's our nervous system that tells all these stem cells what, where to go, what to change into. Okay? And that's why there's so much controversy about the stem cells. Because they can literally become anything. If that nerve tells them to be the heart, that's what they'll be. The nerve tells them to be thyroid, that's what they'll become. Okay? Now let me also tell you what we learned in school is that every seven years, you're a whole new you. That's pretty exciting, right? It's like, I'm going to be, um, what's, you know, 28, I'm not going to be 28, but like, do you think every seven years, like your 28th birthday, and then what sex you're... Help me out. 28, 34. 34. Perfect. Is that right? 34? 34. Like, we're not in math class here, so that's okay. <laughs> but, like, every seven years, you think that you're a whole new. All those cells you used to have are dead and they're replaced with new, healthy ones, right? Well, hopefully. But just think of, like, your skin. Think of it this way. Like, we're all, we all want this nice complexion, so we're exfoliating. It's like, oh, I gotta get this dead skin off so my complexion looks really nice. But the dead ones slough off, but they're. They're, we never run out of skin, right? They're always replaced with new ones, okay? Well, this is happening with all of your cells, your heart cells, your adrenal glands, all this, your sinuses, okay? Every cell that we have is constantly being used up and being replaced with hopefully healthy new ones, okay? But if we have one of these subluxations, if there's a misalignment, then it's going to allow that organ to be infiltrated with unhealthy cells, okay? So if it's in our neck, some of those nerves from our neck go to our thyroid. So then we might grow like a goiter. We might go like one of those big tumors in our, in our thyroid gland. Or if it's in the lower back, we talked about those going to the bowels, we, our bowels might get um, replaced with unhealthy cells and grow like a polyp or one of those diverticuli. Okay? So, uh, number two, we've said first health is your birth, right? So, number two, your nervous system controls, uh, gives life, coordinates every function of your body. So just think of Christopher Reeves, right? We know Superman. He had a severe spinal cord injury. Okay, he broke like the first vertebrae in his neck, so it severed his spinal cord. So he was totally paralyzed, right? He couldn't move muscle. Okay, but he couldn't keep his organs running either. Without all the machines, like he had a machine that kept his heart beating. He had a machine that kept his lungs pumping the air in and out. Okay. So without the modern medicine, he would have died within minutes, okay? But basically, his brain was okay, it just couldn't get the signals down through the spinal cord and out to the rest of the body. It was kind of like the old-time movies where they, they put you in the guillotine. Remember, did they put your leg in there? Nope, right there. Sever, the, sever that connection between the brain and the body is instant death, okay? Now, number three, when a vertebrae or a disc is out of place, that coordination is lost. The life force is lost, like the information lines are blocked. Okay? So now we're saying the brain's okay, the spinal cord is okay, but where the bone is out of place or the disc is out of place, now the signal can't get through that nerve. Okay? So it's kind of like it's kind of like our uh, circuit breakers. I like to think about this, because somewhere in our house we have like this circuit that goes like to the microwave. We have this circuit that goes to the refrigerator. Well if they're on, it's working properly, right? But if you flip that fuse, flip that circuit off. Wherever that wire goes to, that certain electronic, you know, that certain appliance isn't going to work properly. Okay. Well, with us, it's not quite so black and white. We're kind of more like on a dimmer switch. So when we first get that pinch nerve, maybe at first it's so, you know, so minuscule that we don't even really notice. Okay. But as that pressure is there longer and longer, it's like the light gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Okay. And then that part of our body gets sicker and sicker and sicker until. It either has to be cut out or has to be surgery to replace it. Okay. 
Okay. So again, let's go over the subluxation. The bone that's out of place, okay, pinches the nerve, and then we get five symptoms. It's associated with pain or tenderness in the area, tight, tense muscles, heat, it gets hot and swollen, and then stiff. When it's out of place like this, the joint will actually lock up, okay? And then that's what causes it to start fusing up, okay? So, if we remove the pressure from the nerve, okay, if we do the adjustment and put the bone back in place, it frees the body to heal itself, okay? So number one, like I said, we have to catch it in time, okay? So we have to catch it before it's in phase four, and then also, us as chiropractors, any doctor, there's no doctor, there's no pill that can do the healing for you. Your body has to be able to heal itself, okay? So it can't do it on its own. Like when the bone is out of place, there's no way the body can heal that. It'll try and try and try until the day that you die. It's always trying to be healthy, but it can't do it with that nerve being pinched, okay? So when we do the adjustment, it puts the bone back in place, takes the pressure off the nerve, and then the body frees that body's capability. Okay. It allows the body to heal itself. So don't get mad. Let's think of it this way. Let's say we're growing this beautiful garden. We have all these tomatoes and all these wonderful vegetables out there. We have to water it, obviously, right? I mean, it's not going to survive off the amount of rain that we get. So every day we're dragging the hose. We've got to drag the hose to the garden. Or our back doesn't like dragging the hose every day. So we leave the hose across the driveway, and we just set it on the timer. And everything's working out good. It's going to water 30 minutes each day. All we have to do is just pull the weeds and prune it up. And it's looking really good until we get company. And they come and they park their big truck in the driveway. And after just a couple days, I go out. My tomatoes are turning brown. You know, the, all the vegetables are dying. And we assess the situation. And we see, well, the truck has parked on our water line. Well, that's an easy fix. Back the truck up. Okay. Well, it's only been a couple days. The water comes right back through the hose. The, the tomatoes get the water and they perk right back up, okay? So by removing that pressure, by backing the truck up, did we do anything to heal those flowers or heal those tomatoes? No, just think of this way. What if that truck would have stayed on the water line for six months? What if we didn't figure it out? Well, when we finally back the truck up after six months and the tomatoes get the water again, are they gonna be able to heal themselves? No, it's been too late. We didn't catch it in time, okay? We can give them all the water they want, but they're not going to be able to use it to heal themselves. So they've already probably died by it. Okay, so that's like our body. Okay, we remove that pressure. We take that bone. It does, it, does it make sense to everybody? The water is being the water line being pinched by the truck is the bone pinching the nerve. Okay, so with that pressure on there, the body can't do its job and heal itself. But once we remove the truck or you know bone off the nerve, then it frees the body to heal itself again. Okay. So you're sitting here like, yeah, this makes sense, right? I mean, it's almost like they should teach this in school, right? They don't teach you this in fifth grade, do they? Okay? Well, why not? Well, we're not talking about evil people, okay, but we're talking about dollars. Trillions of dollars down our so-called healthcare system, which is really not about health at all, but sickness. It's sick care, okay? Because the hospital CEOs and pharmaceutical companies they don't make any money off of healthy people, but they can't make any money off of dead people either. So they have to keep you like somewhere right in between. Okay. So there's lots of examples of this. Probably my favorite is blood pressure. Like normal blood pressure is like 120 over 80 these days. Okay. Just 30 years ago, it was okay to have 140 over 90. Okay. But when they lowered that standard, you know, everybody has to have 120 over 80. That many more millions of people had to be medicated. So now you have to take this blood pressure medication to bring your blood pressure down to this normal level. Well, what's normal for her might be not might not be normal for her or for me. We all probably have a little bit different, okay? And uh, one of the common side effects of this blood pressure medication is um, heartburn. That's one of the most common. And so you're like, oh, my doctor, now my stomach's hurting so bad ever since I started taking those pills. He said, oh, that's okay. You can have this little pur purple pill, you know, the Nexium or Prilosec, some kind of antacid. You're like, okay, so now I've got to take this antacid. So now that's two pills i got to get from the pharmacy every month. So you're taking this antacid. Well, after you take the antacid each day for a couple months, it blocks your calcium from being absorbed. So even if you're eating good vegetables that have calcium in them, it's just going to pass right through. Your stomach's not going to be able to absorb it. So then what happens? What happens if you don't get your calcium? Osteoporosis, right? Your bones start getting brittle. Okay. Well, guess what? They have a pill for that too. Or you can take a shot once a month. So then there's three medications that you'll be on for the rest of their life. Okay? And they really honestly wouldn't want you to get off of them because that'd be, you know, money off the bottom line. Or we see with surgeries, uh, we see trends like when I was little, 
And everybody had to have their tonsils out. I'm surprised I got away with mine. Tonsils sometimes add noise too. Like every little kid, if they got one little infection, you know, got sick, let's take those tonsils out. Okay. Well, now all of a sudden these days, it's hardly even heard of. Like they try everything to avoid taking the tonsils out, unless it's just like worst case scenario ever, then the kids will go through that kind of surgery. Or there was a hysterectomy fad, right? I think it was like in the 80s. If you're old enough, you didn't want to have any more babies, it's like, okay, let's just get those ovaries and uterus out of there, okay? And uh, now, right now, in our town here, it's the gallbladder. Everybody has to have their gallbladder out, right? One little stone, well, let's just get that gallbladder out of there. That should surely fix the problem, even though that's not even what was causing the gallstones to begin with. But while we're in there taking your gallbladder out, let's take the appendix, too. Because it just can't be any good in there. We better take it out now, okay? But the appendix, just in like the last 10 years, we discovered that the appendix is actually part of your immune system. It, it holds all the good bacteria. Like you see all the yogurt commercials and everything for all these good bacteria. So that's naturally found in our bowels. And the, the appendix is like a little, a little hole, like a little worm off of our large colon. And it holds a lot of those good bacteria. So it's a real big part of our immune system. So sometimes if it's infected, it has to be removed. But you know, don't take or don't fix something that's not broken. Okay. So, uh, so that's the healthcare system is run by the pharmaceutical companies, hospital CEOs. But the biggest money people of all is the insurance companies. Okay, and they ask the doctors to sign a paper that says we're going to do the littlest amount possible for the cheapest price available in the quickest amount of time and get you back out the door. Okay. So each contract that we have to sign, that's what we're saying. We're going to do a little amount to you, you know, not take x-rays, uh, just treat you minimum, you know, a national average is six times, and they get you back out, to, you know, get you out the door, and get rid of you as soon as possible. Because all they're worried about is the bottom line, okay? So those are the real money people. So if you're on, you know, a certain insurance company that we don't take, that's why. And I hope you understand why we don't do our patients that way now, okay? So at this point, we're going to go on to... Uh, some uh, before and after pictures. It's kind of like the proof is in the pudding, okay? So a couple things before we go on. Um, if you've ever been here before, you know that the, the chairs are usually all around the edges. So we set it up classroom style like this so they can all like look straight ahead. So that you're not like turning your head to one side or to the other. So just like think about this like at work or like at home. If there's anything that like a computer screen or like a TV screen, anything that you have to be looking at, make sure it's set up like that, like ergonomically correct, so you're not even just a little bit to the side. You can strain your neck or strain your lower back, okay? And then also every 30, 20, 30 minutes to get up and take a break, okay? Just like move around, change position. So if you want to, this would be a good time to take a little stretch, like the seventh inning stretch before we start on our pictures here. And unfortunately, they all have to share a room. So guess what? When the oldest one is up, then the other two are up, right? And the mom and dad are awake. And this is not just once in a while. This is night after night after night. No one's getting any sleep. So they go to the pediatrician, right? They go to their real doctor, and they do every test. I mean, every test they can think of. They're testing the kidneys. They're testing the bladder. You know, they're taking all kinds of pictures, going up with scopes. They can't find anything there. So you're just going to have to live with this. Okay, there's a, no pill we can give you. There's no surgery that you need so that they don't, they don't have any way to fix it. Well, we did this simple test here. We took a picture of her spine from the front. Does that look very normal? No. Yeah, see, you guys didn't have to go to school for five years to learn that. Yeah, you can see right down here in her lower back, it goes over to the right, and then kind of in between her shoulders, it starts going back over to the left. So she had the beginning of her scoliosis, okay, the curvature. Okay, just starting, just starting at age 10. Well, when this bone right here gets out of place, it pinches the nerve that goes to the kidney into the bladder. Okay, so we did the treatment, and then 90, day, 90 days later, we took this picture here, okay? And you can see it just straightened right out. We caught it in time, so she was able to um, to hold her urine. Now she can sleep 10, 11 hours like a normal, you know, like a normal kid should, okay? But basically, just getting that pressure off that nerve was like backing the truck up off the water line, okay? It allowed the body to function like it should. Basically, the brain's up here. It's sending the signal down through the spinal cord, and it's trying to get out the nerve to it, to go, in this case, to the kidney and the bladder. So when the pressure's on there, it's like the bladder just gets a little bit of fluid. It's like, oh, we gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go right now, right? Like, can't hold it, okay? But when the, when the nervous system is functioning properly, then the organs can function like they're supposed to, okay? Because the nervous system is the master system, it controls every other system in our body. I don't care if it's respiratory, digestive, your hormones, okay? They're all under control of the nervous system, okay? So 
All I have to do is find where this subluxation is at and fix it, and the body will do the rest. But what if, what if her parents hadn't brought her to the chiropractor? I mean, even for bedwetting. I mean, has anybody ever heard of a child going to the chiropractor, period? Well, luckily Natalie's here, but what if they had it? What if they would have just tried to live with it, okay? At 12, 20, what, 22, by the time she's 32, you know, then she would be sick. Then eventually those kidneys, the bladder, you know, eventually would have gotten sick. Maybe they would have had to have surgery, cut part of it out because it had cancer in it, okay? That's what we're talking about. When those nerves are pinched, it's just a matter of time before the organs get sick. And some of the organs you can't just cut out. Okay, now she was just 10 when we met her. Coral, she was 15, and she was a cheerleader. Okay, so she came in, she actually had lower back pain. Where, where Cinnamon, the first one, did not have any pain, okay? This Coral, actually, she had a bad lower back pain. She can do all her flips and all the back handsprings, all their, car, all their cheerleader moves that they do, okay? So her mom has scoliosis, for sure. I have pictures of her mom. But it's hereditary, okay? So it's passed down through the generations. And you can see it curves over to the right, to the left, and the back over to the right. Usually it's like S, like three, like three curves like S has, okay? So you can see that she was, why she was suffering is pretty apparent. And so 30 days later, we took this picture here. <clears throat> no pain, 100%. Back to doing all the cartwheels, back handsprings, whatever she wanted to do. But can you see how it's not quite as healed? I mean, it's not quite as good as that 10-year-old was, okay? So just having it five years longer, they were both born, in both cases, the girls were born with it. So just having it five extra years, therefore it's gonna take longer to fix it. Okay, so even though she felt great, Lack of symptoms doesn't mean that we're healthy, right? I mean, we all probably know somebody that all of a sudden just dropped out of a heart attack. It doesn't mean they were healthy the day before, it just means they didn't have any symptoms. Their first symptom was death, okay? So just because she was feeling great, doesn't mean the problem was fixed, okay? We're getting closer, much better, but we still had work to do. So all too many times, people make the mistake of quitting their treatments here because they're feeling good, they don't understand why they need to come back, and then just one little thing, you know, just like, how it started in the beginning, one little thing, straw that broke the camel's back, and then we're all right back to where we started. Right back, I will start all over again. We didn't take the time to heal, to strengthen all those little muscles and tissues, and then it just re-injures itself. Like, basically, like, does anybody have braces? I had to have braces on my teeth. So if we just had the braces on there for a couple months, then we decided, oh, they look good enough, let's take the braces off. What do you think is gonna happen? They're just gonna all go right back to where they were. All that money, all that time down the drain. Now, Miss Pauline, she too is in our scoliosis set here, and she was 74 years old when we met her, okay? You can see how her legs, she had the left leg 8 millimeters shorter, so it's spine curve over to the left, and then she had it compensated back over to the right, okay? So she was, she was concerned the most that she was taking ibuprofen every day. She knew 800 milligrams ibuprofen day after day after day, eventually she was going to get sick. She couldn't do this for a long period of time, okay? So we did her adjustments, and this was just 30 days. Just in the first 30 days, uh, her legs went from 8 millimeters to just 5. So you can see how the tailbone's not as tilted to the left. It's like more parallel to the ground, and so the curve isn't as severe. It doesn't have to go over to the left and back over to the right as much. So even at her age, we caught it before phase three, or before phase four. Okay, she was probably in the phase three, but at least it wasn't four yet. So there's still, we can still move it. We can still get it back in place. But at her age, she um, she told me she didn't really have any symptoms. Like the first time her back hurt wasn't until she was like 30 years old. Okay, but 30. This was like 40, you know, almost 50 years ago now. She went to a DO, a doctor of osteopath, and they do they do manipulate the spine, they move the bones, but their whole theory is um, circulation. They say the blood flow, the artery is the pre. Okay, so the, he didn't know that she had scoliosis. If he if he even knew, he didn't tell her, and um, therefore she didn't get any treatment until here we are, you know, 40 years later, and now it's almost to the point where it's not reversible. Okay, we can help it, but probably never be like 100%. Not like those young girls that we saw, okay? But at 30, you know, if somebody had told her to go to the chiropractor, it would have been a lot easier than living with it and letting it get worse over 40 years. But yeah, with her treatment, she got off the ibuprofen, and then she can avoid having to be on dialysis because her kidneys were ruined. Okay, now Dorothy, 
We all have this bad habit of saying, oh, it's, it's age, right? I'm just old. I just have to live with this because I'm better than being dead. But I showed Dorothy, 86 years old. She has never gone more than about four weeks without adjustment. Even when she was little, her parents found a way to get her to the chiropractor. And this is her lower back from the side and the lower back from the front. Okay, so even after a bad car accident, she <clears throat> had broken her pelvis here. Like, see how that one side is higher? Her spine, she kept her spine into alignment so that she didn't get any arthritis. I mean, can you an 86 year old? I mean, it's probably pretty darn rare of any 86 year olds that don't have really any arthritis to speak of. See how she has nice big spaces? And <clears throat> there's lots of cushion in between the vertebrae and really no bone. So she has some other problems, but like I said, taking care of herself since she was young, this is her good health to show for it, okay? But just the opposite is true too. So it's not because of age, because we're old, because young people can have the same problems. I have Peter, Peter, he was only, oh, that's from the front. This is Peter from the side, 27 years old, okay? See how, first of all, he's curving the opposite direction, right? He should curve in, and he's curving the opposite direction, but he has these misalignments, these subluxations, have caused already in him the degenerative disc disease. He's already in the phase two, which means it's been there 20 to 40 years, okay? He's only 27 years old. So he, maybe it was even birth, maybe during the birth process, when he was being delivered, he could have got those subluxations, okay? But it's been there at least 20 years because he has the arthritis. Okay, so arthritis is not because of, you know, how old we are. It's from these misalignments. Like I said in the beginning of the class, trauma or injury and not taking care of it, just neglecting it, equals poor health. Okay, so it doesn't matter how old we are. We can be two years old or 22 years old or 92 years old. Okay, now Sue, she too has scoliosis, but hers was a little bit different. I'm going to show you her lower back from the side and then from the front here. So she was about 60. She broke her right leg and then left it about four millimeters shorter. Okay. So when we break our legs, sometimes it grows back longer or shorter. Okay. Um, knee replacements, hip replacements, they can leave one leg longer or shorter than the other. And then the spine will curve because of that. Okay. It causes those misalignments above it. Okay. So she had the scoliosis because of that. So it had only been there about two years in this case. So from this side, she has too much curve. She has like a sway back. But at this point, it's only been here for a couple of years. And so the discs are pretty well, you know, they're pretty still well maintained, right? They haven't had time to degenerate yet, okay? But she would get the sciatic pain. Okay, it would go down her leg. But you know, usually one or two times she would feel better. And then we wouldn't see her for a year, two years. You know, then she'd come back in again, okay? Well, this was, 2007. This was about two years later, I believe. Yeah, 2009. So two years in between. Okay, this one's later. Before she came back this time, she'd already been to the emergency room twice for constipation so bad. Whatever laxative they gave her the first time, didn't cut it. Okay, she goes back a second time. Another laxative, still no movement. And by the time she got to my office, she was just begging for some dynamite, right? I mean, if you can't go, you can't go. She was like, builds, it builds, it builds so much pressure. And um, you can see when we took these x-rays, these new pictures here, look at that bottom space. See how that one's still pretty big? That's three, okay? But look at four and five here, the very bottom ones, right above the tailbone. Can you see the difference? Mm -hmm. Even in the back, can you see the difference there? Can you see any? Come on up. Come on up. Okay. You can see how that space is thinner. So just in two years, it had time to degenerate, and those were the same ones that we were talking about, the kidney and the bladder, but they also go to the bowels, okay? So if the nerve can't get the signals out to the bowel, the bowel can't move. It's just like a muscle, just like your bicep is, okay? It needs that nerve to tell it to move the waist, to move all the, you know, all the poop out, right? So she got her adjustment, restored that nervous impulse to the large colon, and then she was able to go to the bathroom. Okay, and she also had a bladder infection. So the pinched nerve didn't give her bladder infection, but your body is more susceptible, okay? Your immune system is lower when you have these pinched nerves. So it makes you more susceptible to any kind of infection. In this case, through the bladder, because that's where the nerve was going to, okay? But uh, we can use all the alcohol, all the hand sanitizer we want, 
it's not the germs that make us sick, it's when we get weak. When we are, when our immune system is down because of our nervous system, then we can't fight it off. Then we're, you know, then we're weaker. And the bacteria can get inside. So I'm going to show you what not to do. Okay, let's learn from what not to do from other past patients here. Let me get these in the right order. Okay, we first met, well, I didn't first meet Richard. 1996, Dr. Carter, Mary Carter, used to own the practice. I bought the practice from her after like 17 years. So we had this picture of Richard when he was only 49 years old. And this is his neck, okay? So he had neck pain, he came in, he felt so much better, he didn't come back for 13 years, okay? But I want to direct your attention to these third and fourth vertebrae. See, one, two, three, and four. See how that space is just a little bit smaller than the ones above it and ones below it? See how there's bigger spaces above and below? And then down here, there's some smaller ones too. But this is where the subluxation is at. So even though he felt better, the problem didn't get corrected and even even if it was corrected, it came back, he didn't maintain it. Because like I said, we didn't see him for 13 years. And then when he came back, 2009, he went from 49 years old to 62 years old. Now can you see that third and fourth vertebrae? It looks like one big vertebrae, doesn't it? It's hardly any space in there at all. It's almost bone on bone. So just a matter of 13 years, it went from like maybe a phase two to almost a phase four. Okay. Well at this point, guess what? It wasn't in his neck, just not just a simple neck pain anymore. It had gone down his right arm so bad that he was basically paralyzed. Like he couldn't sign his name. He had to have his girlfriend come do all his paperwork. He liked to work with wood. There's no way he could do any of his woodworkings. It was all he could do just to put the you know coffee cup to his mouth. He would drop it. Okay. Well, if that wasn't good enough, we got his arm all fixed up. He was back to doing his hobbies, making all kinds of cool little wood things again. But then <clears throat> he didn't maintain it. He thought, oh, I feel good. I'm just gonna, you know, I'll call you when I need you, okay? Now just two years, just two years went by, 2011, and now you can see that space there, and now the one just below it too, okay? See where it was getting small? That got even thinner. Guess what, it came back on the right, and it came back on the left side too, okay? Each time it got worse and worse, so then both hands were dead. Both hands were dropping things, so you couldn't shave or couldn't eat at all. Okay, so that's how important it is to, even though you feel well, to maintain anything that's not, anything that's improved needs to be maintained, otherwise it goes right back to the shape that it started in, or worse, like we saw in this case. Okay, but, I'm going to show you the good news now. If you do maintain, it can get better. You can actually go backwards. So even if you have arthritis, it can be reversed with proper care. Miss Jean, Jean Kelly, she came in. Her first time back in 2011. You get these in the right order. Okay. And she too, she had this foliosis. It's very common in our office. Okay. So she, oh, let me put it the right way here. Okay. So she has the left leg, her left leg shorter. So see how it goes over to the left and then kind of curves back over to the right. So she too, she's had this 63 years, right? So from the side, you see the same lower back. She's like in the phase three. Those bottom discs are almost gone phase three, and we caught it just just in time, just before it fused, okay? But after two years, each, I mean, we've taken more x-rays than this, but um, after the initial treatment plan, we take x-rays once a year. So now this was her two-year x-ray. We just did uh, February of 2013, and this is the same gene. So look at number three. Look at that one compared to number three here. Do you see that? That one's almost back to normal. And then four is better, too. See how small that space was? And now it's opened up at least back to a phase two, and even five, even that very bottom one, right above the tailbone. Do you see how there's more space in there? Okay, so basically she went from this, where it was almost, almost touching, back to at least the phase two here, where there was more space, and in some of them, even back to the phase one, where the disc was almost back to normal, okay? And that's just because even though she feels good, she still comes in once a month and gets checked on, okay? And then her back just gets better and better, okay? Back to normal. Now, it never fails. We always have somebody, you know, that's had a son or has grandma that's already had neck surgery and still have problems. Looks like it never really takes care of it. So, we don't know if we can help them, but I know if they have a subluxation, we're the only ones that can help them. Okay, let's start with Albert here. Albert. I had. Okay, this 
his first one. Okay. So he came in after about 10 years after his neck surgery. So see that funny looking plate? That's a metal plate with two screws at the top, two screws at the bottom. And then from the side, see the plate in the front and the screws go in this way? Okay, so they fused two of his vertebrae together. One, two, three, four, C5, the fifth and the sixth vertebrae are fused together, okay? But <clears throat> look at what happened. They fused right in the middle, but the problem was a subluxation right below and a subluxation right above, okay? So when he came in, this is one that was bothering him. It was pinching him on his left side of his neck, coming up to his eye so bad, he said it was just like somebody's like ice pick, stabbing him right in the eyeball. So he'd wear these dark glasses, and he wasn't very nice, you know, it was just like asking a question, you know, just real short, you know, rough answers, okay? But when we did 30-day pictures here, see how that opened right up? See how that space, there's like just as much space on the left as there is on the right now? Well, at this point, his glasses came off, he was just laughing and smiling. I mean, he'd even come in early before his appointment just so he could sit and hang out and tell us jokes. And okay? we really liked being around him after that. Um, but what was interesting, not only did usually they do the operations in the wrong place, okay, they don't even fuse or, you know, operate where the actual subluxation's at, but once they fuse those, can you see what that one above it did? Can you see how it, like, grew onto the metal? It actually fused itself. The, bone, the body has fused four, the fourth vertebrae, right, two, the fifth, and sixth one, and the other ones are trying to do it too. So time after time after time, we see this happen is where they fuse maybe one segment, then the ones either above it or below it start to go back to. It's just like a catch-22. It just gets worse and worse. Okay? But with proper care, we got him better and saved him from another surgery. Unfortunately, the next one we didn't get to back to Mr. Larry. Take a look at this one here. This is his lower back. Okay. So the right hip, the left hip, the tailbone here, and see the vertebrae all stacked on top of each other? He has one vertebrae, he has L1 that has not been fused. From the side, even in the sacrum, say S1, they call it five, four, three, two, one is up there. So he, they call this like a cage fusion. So talk about being stiff. I mean, he can't, it was hard for him to bend at all, you know, besides what he came in here for was his sciatic pain. He had the worst case of sciatica going all the way down his right leg to the toes. He <laughs> stomp like that. That was what would make him feel better. It was stomp like that. It was just so bad. And he's already had nine surgeries, I think. And just think at least, at least a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Just to make my math easy. A million dollars in his back and to still have the worst case of sciatic I've ever seen. I mean, I would find a way to pay a million dollars to get the problem fixed, but not to live on morphine and Vicodin, you know, pain pill, oxycodone, oxycontin. Okay. So we adjusted this top vertebrae to see how it's out of place. See, it's over pinching that nerve on the right side that goes down the right leg. And he was able to at least make it. See, he was a snowbird. So it was all he could do just to sit in the car and drive 10 miles, like from Raymar down here. I mean, he couldn't, his leg wouldn't let him sit there and do the pedals, okay? But we got him enough relief that he could go drive the fifth wheel back up to Northern California to see the new grandbabies being born. And then we could save him from surgery number 10, okay? So he didn't have to go through another one. But it wouldn't help anyway. So that's why our insurance is so expensive. That's why hospital bills just keep getting higher and higher because we do surgeries that don't even fix the problem and cost a lot of money. So I have one more picture here. And it too, this too is her lower back. She, Yolanda came in, she was a restaurant owner. So she's the first one there, the last one to leave at night, on her feet all day. Okay? She couldn't be, um, she couldn't be you know, slowed down with this right leg, her right leg too, her sciatic pain. She was only 45 when I met her. At 35, she had the back surgery. So see, this is a little bit different. They just did L5, the very bottom one, to her tailbone, okay? So she, um, ever since she woke up from surgery, she could not urinate on her own. She has to use a catheter every single time and manually drain the bladder, because they hit those nerves. Remember, we talked about them going to the bladder. They hit those nerves, and now the brain can't, the brain can't say, okay, we're to the bathroom now, let's relieve ourselves. No, she has to do it manually. And um, we, even though we fixed her leg up 100%, unfortunately it was permanent damage to the bladder that couldn't be reversed. So she said she only peed about twice a day because the inconvenience, the time, you know, it's time consuming and the risk of infection. You know, you have to have new tubes, clean tubes each time, otherwise you're going to be infecting yourself from shoving the bacteria in there. Okay, so unfortunately at 45 years old, 
And it was too late. We didn't get, we didn't catch it in time. Okay, so we have one more story. But we don't have pictures for this one because it's much too long ago. But we've got a little girl. And she was like six or seven, like when you first start getting into sports, like playing the t-ball and everything. She just had every spring, every fall, just the most terrible allergies. Just like, the you know, you have to take the inhalers, have to take the, the antibiotics. So, you know, sometimes she can't even talk because there's just so much like mucus draining down, you know, drains down and then you start coughing. So there's many times that she couldn't even like lay down at night. You know, like if you uh, lay back and you drip and you start coughing. And then you she just had to be propped up, you know, <sighs> just struggling for each breath. Or you see them, you know, they're out there, they're trying to run and they, <laughs> they can't even breathe. They have to get their little puffer or they got these big bags, these big dark circles under their eyes, okay? So this went on and on, antibiotics twice a year, and Haley every time she wants to run. And, um, and then by the time she was like, mm, what, 13, 14, getting into like freshman, like high school years, then her stomach, her stomach just got so bad, like um, to eat anything acidic, like like uh, pizza, like the spaghetti sauce, soda, anything acidic like that. Not just the burn, but her stomach would actually reject it. Just like, Ugh, we can't take this, you know, we can't, we didn't, can't even deal with this. Okay. So again, back to the pediatrician, back to the doctor, and they said that valve right there is too weak. So they gave her steroids, like um, to strengthen it, right? Hold that stomach valve up, and then the anti antacids. So two prescription medications, still the same problem. Still can't have the pizza. I mean, it really, it just kill me now if I can't ever eat pizza again, right? I mean, we shouldn't have it all the time, but if I can't have pizza, I don't want to go on living, right? So two prescriptions still, same thing, pizza, soda, anything acidic, just right back, you know, bleh, puke it right back up, okay? So finally, her parents took to the chiropractor. Someone mentioned, well, maybe you should see if the chiropractor can help. Well, we've tried everything else, let's try that, okay? So they found scoliosis, okay? So first, when she was just a little girl, see how the shoulder is just a little bit tilted and the hip's just a little bit higher on the left side, okay? Well, right where that top line goes through, Right, the, right between the shoulders, that's where the nerve goes to the lungs, okay? Causing the asthma, causing the allergy problems, okay? Well, inhalers, antibiotics aren't going to fix that. Meanwhile, it just gets worse. So by the time she's a teenager, then you can really see, really, that right shoulder's a lot higher. That left hip's a lot higher, okay? Well, now, right between the shoulders, see that little curve, how it curves like a snake over to the right side? That's where the nerves come out. So see, first we saw heart and lungs. Then that next group of lungs comes out, and guess where it goes to? to the stomach, okay? So um, so again, the steroids, the antacids aren't gonna fix that, okay? But the chiropractor did, and that little girl was me. That was my story. That's how I became a chiropractor, because it saved my life. I don't have to take um, inhalers anymore. I don't have to take antacids. We used to have pizza every Monday night, but I just said, okay, but I'm gonna lead by example that even though we can eat pizza, we shouldn't. Okay? Mm -hmm. So back to the beginning when we said um, there's three major types of stress, the physical, okay? But you guys are helping yourself physically by getting in here, you know, by getting your adjustments. You're ahead of most 97% of the population, okay? Um, but also we talked about mental or emotional, okay? So keeping a positive mental attitude. Uh, we don't watch the news. We try not to um, let negative things affect us that we really don't have any control over, right? And then chemical, like I said, eating healthy diet, fruits and vegetables, uh, staying away from sodas and you know things with lots of preservatives, and staying off of medications. And that's why you guys are here too, right? Because we don't want to take drugs. We want to get help the natural way, the way the body was meant to heal. Okay. So as you guys are sitting there, I'm sure you have lots of questions. So I'm going to give this to you guys. show you a couple things where you can like get up in the morning and check yourself out in the mirror or you can use this information to like um, see like your friends and family or you might even see people in Walmart and be like oh look at his neck or look at, look at his one shoulder tire okay so the sun's right here right there huh okay so looking straight ahead I just like to start at the top and we just like look at the head okay so we can look at her earrings and see like left, left earrings lower 
So you have the head is tilted to the left side there. Okay. Let's see the shoulders higher on the left shoulder. Okay. And then we can check the hips and see if one yeah, looks like her left hip is a little bit higher there too. Okay. And then, so um, let me show you. So when the head is tilted and the shoulders higher, that can be from those subluxations. That's one sign that we have a misalignment that's making the shoulders crooked and the head lean to the side. So when the bones get out of place, it pinches those nerves, nerves, okay? But also remember we said it locks up. It gets stuck and it doesn't move properly. So if we look down, can we look down to your toes? Mm -hmm. Oh, not real good. How about looking up to the ceiling? Okay, that's pretty good. Turn to your right, okay? And then to the other side too. No, is it harder to go one way? Uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't turn as far. So we see it doesn't turn quite as far as it does to the right. And what about tilt? What if you tilt, like bring your ear? Yeah, and then to the left. And the same with that. Is it harder one way? Or both the same? Uh, being left is a little bit, a little bit harder. Yes, yeah. so that's another sign. Like we can move easier to the one side, and the other side it's like it just doesn't want to go that far. Okay, so that's another sign that there's a subluxation in there. Okay, there's a one that's out of place pinching those nerves. Okay, all right. So now I'm all finished with you. So now you can use a certificate, just like someone told you that Natalie could be helped. Now we can take this to our friends, our family.